Hi everyone, can you hear me? Hi Charlotte. Hi Barbara. Okay, so can you just let me know whether you can hear me or not? Hi Heather. You can hear me. Good morning, all. We are finally getting rain. Can hear you, Marcy is saying. Denise is saying, hi, everyone from Chile, Leicester. Okay. Um, Denise is saying, can hear me. So can you hear me? okay or is it too low or too high or i'm still working this new microphone trying to work this new microphone out so hi rachel you can hear me as well barbara's saying loud and clear okay okay that's fine then um Okay, I don't think I can see any more comments at the moment. Hi, Karen. And Karen can hear me. Rachel saying happy Father's Day to all the women. Ellen is saying hi, Ashley. Ellen here. Your cushion was beautiful, beautiful and inspired me to try quilting. Oh, fantastic, Ellen. Thank you. I was able to hear you when I turned the sound up on the iPad. Okay. Uh, can hear me loud and clear. Okay, so the consensus seems to be that you can hear me and that's something. Um, so I haven't actually got, or I didn't actually, I'll start again. I didn't, sound is fine. Okay. I didn't actually have anything specific to do today, but I came and had a quick look on my computer yesterday and I had a look in Canvas Workspace in the projects. And hopefully you should be able to see my Canvas workspace screen. Um, I'm just double checking it everywhere. I can see it on my iPad and I can see it on my phone. So hopefully you can all see it. And in Canvas workspace, this here, it says birthday card that looks like a cake kind of caught my eye. So I thought, um, as I've not done any Canvas workspace projects for a while, I'd have a look at, at possibly cutting this and putting it together. Bright sunshine here in north, in the northeast. Um, yeah, it's dry and brightish here today. Um, Hannah's gone off over to Derby. I'm going over in the morning. Then I'm going to stay over tomorrow night. She's got a two-day comp this week, Monday and Tuesday. So I'm here tonight for you guys. And then I'm going to go over in the morning. Hi, Ashley and everyone. Hope you're all well. Hi, Thea. Yep, yeah, fine. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at this. So, birthday card, it's called. And if you look at the the mats here it's spread out over several mats now looking at it it doesn't look as though it's a card in the traditional sense you know one that like has a front and a back and opens it just seems to be all this one layer but I thought what we'd do I've plugged in um, my scan and cut USB stick into the machine Thanks, Rachel. She's still not right, Rachel. Um, we've 
we've been given some details for somebody to go and see privately. So we've sent the person a message and we're just waiting to hear from them. And I think we're going to have to pay and go and have some tests done to see. Um, she's better than she was, but she's she's still not right. So she's, she's struggling. She's just scared to eat anything because she, you know, she doesn't actually, but she thinks it's dairy. So she thinks anything dairy. Um, but it, it's, it's just a nightmare really. But anyway, not to worry. Um, Barbara's saying, oh, so excited. Great Sunday, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Dull and cool in South Derbyshire, Thea's saying. Okay. Well, Hannah's over at Kedleston at the moment. Thea, don't know if you know where that is. Um, that's where I'm going over tomorrow. Right, let's have a look at this. So, um, it looks as though it's spread out over eight mats, which, you know, it kind of doesn't really need to be, does it really? Because we can put different bits of card on a mat and cut, ser cut several of the sections at one. But basically, I'm going to download the whole thing as it is and then we'll have a look at it and see what we've got. Now, this square here, I think, is this piece of pattern paper that's got the spots on it. So this section here looks like the base of the card. This next section... Oh, thank you, Rosemary. It's just right for me, Charlotte's saying. Um... So this one, I think, is the pattern paper. This thin bit here, I think, is that blue strip on the bottom. These bits here look like these kind of um, scallopy sections. This yellow is this banner. These are for the candles, and you've got some flowers, and then there's a happy birthday. I may or may not cut the happy birthday, depending on how much time I've got. Um, I think maybe, you know, we'll see how we go with the rest of the assembly. Hi Donna, she's saying good morning. Yes, I know Kedleston, it's the other side of Derby to me. Okay, well that's where she is now, having a practice round and that's where she's playing on Monday and Tuesday. So I've got to go over and caddy for her. So, right, okay, so let's have a see what we've got. So we've got the PDF recipe, which basically I think just explains, um, you know, all the sections and then we've got this bit here that says zip and it says download all parts so I'm going to click on the bit that says download all parts and that has now dropped hopefully into my downloads folder the folder here so I'm just going to pop that on my desktop double click to open it and then here are all those mats with all those elements and there's a picture of the card that you know you could either print out or you could keep open on your phone or something if you you know want to know how to try and remember to put all the bits together i'm actually using all my technology at the moment so i'm not sure whether i can download a picture of it or not but what i'll probably do is keep a picture on my main desktop computer and I can always kind of look across the table if I get stuck how to put this all together. So we can close that down and I'll think I'll just leave this this bit here open so that if I'm stuck I can always just quickly have a look at this on my desktop when I move over to my other desk to see how it goes together. So I'm going to drag this folder, this blue folder now that's on my desk, it's 000015, that, that must be just what this particular design is called, and I'm going to drag it onto the USB stick that I've already got plugged in in the back of my computer. So now when I double click to open it, there's the folder, and when I double click to open it, there's all the bits. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to right click on this USB stick that's called Scan and Cut 2. Excuse me. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Eject Scan and Cut 2. And 
I've said this, I think, before, but whenever you're using a USB stick, you have to make sure you eject it properly before you plug it out of your computer. Because if you don't, you can corrupt, um, you know, the, the data that's on it. So I'm going to flip you over to my scan and cut machine. And then I'm just going to bring over all my bits and pieces to my other desk, along with the USB stick. And we'll plug this into the scan and cut and we'll see what we've got. So just bear with me one minute because I've got to swap desks now and take all my technology with me. So I can't see your comments just for a few seconds. So. Okay, so can you all still hear me? Hi Ted, happy Sunday to you. So I'm just going to see if my other camera is going to come on. So just bear with me a minute. Linda Lee's saying, hear you fine, can you hear? Oh, brilliant. Because I've moved desks, so I've had to move the microphone and everything. So let's just see if my other overhead camera will come on because it was it was dead a few minutes ago, but I've plugged it in. So let's have a look what we've got. Okay, so. I've got my regular standard scan and cut mat and I've got some card here that I use from time to time. So I think this will be what I'll try and use to make the cake. Now, I'm not so sure whether I've got enough of each colour to make this project in exactly as it is on in canvas, but I'll do my best. So, just moving all sorts of things around here. So let's go over to the scan and cut machine. I've got my USB stick. I'm just going to plug it in the side. My spatula and my bits and pieces all ready. Mandy, don't worry, I've literally only just started. We're doing the birthday card project from Canvas Workspace. It looks like a birthday cake. So I've literally just shown you where it is in Canvas Workspace, put it onto a USB stick and that's as far as I've got. So you've not really missed anything at all. Righty ho. So hopefully now you're all looking at my machine. I'm going to go to retrieve data. Now obviously I put it on a USB stick so that's where I'm going to say I want to retrieve it from. And here's the folder 00015. So I'm going to select that. And then this, these are all the elements. So I think the only thing from memory that we needed in white was the base card. And I think one of the flowers is white. Hi, Alison. Hope you're okay. So I think the flower's got several layers and one of it is white, but I'm going to do that separately. So what I'm going to do at the moment, I'm just going to cut the main base card, which is matte A. So I just need to grab a piece of white card. Sean's saying, late joining, sorry, confused why you were using USB. Is it so that you can go straight to the machine? 
Uh, Sean, the reason that I used the USB was because there are eight mats to this design and rather than me open each individual mat in Canvas Workspace and then have to send each one over separately to the machine, it's easier when you've got multiple mats to download the whole folder and put it all on a USB, then you can put the USB into your machine and choose which match you want to cut. Because when you send a file over from Canvas Workspace, you can only send one over at a time. So if I opened one of the eight maps in Canvas Workspace, I'd have to send it over wirelessly, then I'd have to come over here to my scan and cut, retrieve it and then save it, then I'd have to go back to Canvas, get the second map, send that over and keep going. So I hope that makes sense. Right, I'm just trying to find a piece of card, a piece of white card, so just bear with me. Okay, so I've got a piece of white card. Now I'm going to take the plastic off my mat and I'm going to put this piece of white card just on this mat now it doesn't need to be this is a4 and just looking at the design it looks as though it's about maybe seven inches long and possibly six inches wide but rather than me mess about cutting this down i'm just going to put the whole piece of a4 on and then we'll cut it from there on my tablet with headphones tonight not big tv football on Knee coming on with physio, but still waiting to see consultant surgery or not. Oh, you still don't know, Alison. What a pain. And Sean's saying, oh, that makes sense, thanks. Okay, brilliant. Like, this is what I'm here for. Right, let's go back to the machine. So, I'm going to load this mat into the machine, which you probably actually can't see at the moment, but... I think it's just more important at the moment that you see the screen. So I've got the cake. Let me see if I can zoom you in a bit more. Okay, you should be able to see the cake now, which is on my screen mat. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use the background scan icon and scan my mat with this piece of white card just so that I know that I'm going to get this cake shape in the right place. So Charlotte's saying, Sean, I think it's because there were so many mats it was just more efficient to download them all onto a USB stick. Yes, perfect it was, Charlotte. Thank you. Okay, so obviously we've got... Um, a white cake on a, on a white piece of card, you know, which isn't that great to see. Just going to darken my background. So there you go. I can see the cake shape now on this piece of white card. So I've just got my regular blade in this machine and I'm just going to say OK and select and cut and then start. Oh, and I need to go into my settings because Half cut is still turned on from when I did the vinyl project. So I'm just going to go into the wrench and scroll down and turn half cut off. Otherwise, I'm not going to get my blade to cut all the way through this piece of card. So that's off now. So I can say OK. And I can now press start because it says half cut is off. So this is the first element. And then the next element is the what they're using as polka dot paper. So I am just going to, when this is cut, just turn around and see what pattern paper I've got that I can use to cut the next layer. I'll try and do the mats in order as they are. So you might just have to bear with me while I try and, you know, choose colours. Could you have duplicated and welded to make a normal cake? Well, looking at the size of it, Barbara, um, you can duplicate it and weld it, but 
it's seven inches long by about six inches wide. So if you duplicated it and welded it, I think it will make it bigger than 12 inches. So you'd have to have a 12 by 24 mat to cut it at this at, at that size. Or the other option would be to open everything in Canvas Workspace, group it all together and size it smaller so that if you wanted to make the base card a proper card, you're going to have to make the whole thing smaller. Does that does that make sense? I can tell you how many times I've forgotten the half cut setting either on or off <laughs> to have me grimace. Oh, poor Ted. Um, hi, Lynn. Hope you're okay. It's all right, Lynn. I'm only just starting. Right, so let's, un I'm going to say okay and unload this mat. And then, Barbara, you might be able to see what I'm talking about when I come to this. So if I peel this away now and I'll just put that piece of white on one side because I think I need it for a bit of the flower so if you look at the size of this base card now if I put it there it's over six inches tall so if you wanted to make this as a card even if you angled it I don't think it would fit on a regular 12 by 12 mat so you'd have to make the whole lot smaller. Okay, great. You, that's fine. Good thinking to make all smaller. I think that would be the only way. Um, let's just make it as it is for now. And then if I've got time, we'll go back to the Canvas Workspace screen and we'll have a look at it there. So that's layer one. So now I need the pattern paper. So let's see what we've got. Just going to bring in some six by six papers and see if we've got anything that's oh that's nice there you go spotty that would do right so i'm going to use that because they used spots on theirs although they were bigger weren't they theirs are more like polka dots these are more just like little spots so this is just some old six by six stamping up paper this is from the best dressed if anybody's still got any of you know they're all stamping up paper so that's on the map now let's go back to the scan and cut load this mat now um where's my stylus okay hopefully you're all still um with me it might work if you detach the candles from the from the back part. Yeah, um, what I was thinking was maybe cutting a piece of card and just scoring it and then attaching it as a back, which we can have a look at again when I've cut all the parts. So we can try and have a look at a couple of different variations. Love this when you're on gives us our mojo back off. Thanks, Alison. Right, so I'm going to go home, hit the home button. Yes, OK to delete the cake. I'm going to go retrieve data, USB, back to the folder and choose the second mat. OK, so for anybody that might not have been with me from the start, this is the design in Canvas Workspace and the project seems to be spread over eight separate mats. So again, I'm going to do a background scan and start. I mean, I could probably try and just do it by eye, but for anybody that might be new or doesn't know what I'm doing, at least if I just keep repeating it, hopefully you'll all, you know, get the gist of how to use background scan and that kind of thing within the machine. So I can see where that rectangle is now and it's fitting perfectly on this piece of, um, dotty paper so I'm going to say OK select and cut and then we'll press start and then that's going to be um, map two. Map three I think is that thin piece of blue so while this is cutting I'm just going to 
look in this folder that I've got on my desk and see if I've got any blue that is going to be hopefully big enough. So that's going to say OK. Uh, come back to my desk, unload the mat. So this, I think, goes on there, like so. But as I say, if you look at the canvas workspace, they seem to have bigger, bigger dots. I was a bit late coming on tonight, but it's great to use up our scratch. Yeah, I think it is. That's what, this is my scrap folder. A lot of the card that's in here is the stuff I got at Hobbycraft, and it's some old, retired Stampin' Up! card stock, so... I kind of just keep it all together. So that's what we've got so far. We've got the base layer and the next layer. I think I need a piece of blue next. I think that's the next mat. So we'll go back to the machine. We'll say home, okay, retrieve data, USB, file, uh, mat three, which is this piece of blue. So I think this piece of blue that I've got is gonna be big enough. So I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna stick this piece of blue card in the top left-hand corner of my mat. And hopefully, um, because this is only a skinny little piece, I won't need to scan this mat. So I can save a bit of time with this one. So I'll load the mat. Okay, so I know I've got my piece of blue card snug up here in this top left hand corner. So this should cut fine. So I'm just going to say OK for this one. Select and cut and hope that I've got it in the right place, which I'm sure I have. So that's map three. I'm just going to have a quick drink of my water. Okay, so that's that one cut. So I'm going to say OK. Let's see if we can just go back. Mm, no, we can't. So I have to go home again. Home, OK to delete all patterns, retrieve data, USB, into the folder. So we want map four now, which are those two shades of pink. So they're like the frosting, I think, for the cake. So I'll unload this map. Sorry, it's a, a lot of jumping from camera to camera, but at least you can see what I'm doing. So I'll peel that piece off. So this is the little skinny bit of blue, and I think this, this goes on the bottom here, I think, like that. Not that you can see that very well at the moment, but if I just get all the elements, and then we'll do the assembly. So... I need two shades of pink. So let's see what we've got in here that might be hopefully big enough. Oh, and we have, we've got two shades, perfect. So we'll use a pale pink and a dark pink. Now I am gonna trim these down because I don't need a lot, but I'm just going to do it with my scissors to save some time. I've just put the two pieces together and it looks as though I need about two inches by just under six. So I'll, I'll make it bigger than I need and then. So that's going back in there. So we've got pale pink and dark pink. So we'll have the pale pink on top. I'm just rubbing it down with my spatula and we'll have the dark pink underneath. And then I will have to back, do a background scan for this one so that I know that I'm positioning all the elements. So again, let's go back to the scan and cut. Load this mat. Right, let me see if anybody's got any questions while I'm just waiting for this because I can just see things flashing up in front of me. 
Your USB idea is brilliant, Ashley, as my laptop and machine are in different rooms. I usually get a lot of exercise when I'm making a project. Well, that's Sean, that's what used to happen with me because I have my, this room that I'm in now, everything is in one room, but the, it's only been like this since kind of like the back end of last year. So basically I had my computer in here, which I used to use Canvas, and my scan and cut was in the room next door. So I used to have to do the same, put things from a computer onto my USB, then get up, go into the other room, plug the USB in. So yeah, um, Alice is saying, hi Ashley, I haven't been here in a while. I'm able to join today from Toledo, Ohio. Oh, welcome Alice. I noticed quite a few new projects being added lately. You have to scroll all the way through. Okay, well, I've, to be honest, I, um, Alison, I, I've not looked. There was another one that I saw. It's got like little boats on it. It seems to be like a bit of a fun fold card. Um, I did look at that one. I kind of toyed with the idea, but then I, I liked the, the look of this one. It was nice and bright. So I just thought I'd, I'd do this one. Right, where are we? We're back at the, the screen. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to do background scan and start. And then I think we need a piece of yellow, which I'm, I'm not so sure whether... Oh, I have got a piece of yellow, but I don't know whether it's going to be big enough. So anyway, we'll see. I'm jumping ahead. So we're doing. I'm doing pink at the moment. So I think if you should be able to see my screen, this one and this one, I'm just going to check the size because they... I don't know which one's the smaller one and which one's the bigger one. So I'm just going to select one of these and say edit, object edit and go to the size and see what it is. So it's 0 0.72 high. So if I click on this one, are they both the same? Maybe you just offset them. So they look as though they're the set. I thought they were different sizes. So I'm having trouble picking. Um, selecting that one again so what I'm going to do I'm going to say okay uh, okay let's get to my arrows select that and then I'm just going to bring it down so I thought these were two different sizes but they, they don't appear to be so maybe you just offset them so I'm going to cut two in pale pink two in dark pink I'm going to say okay So Barbara's saying cake cards are great for little or big people. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. It looks so bright. I mean, and if it was for a child, you could cut a number on your machine and, and pop the number up, you know, on like on dimensionals or 3D foam and put that on the front of it, you know, instead of maybe the banner or as well as the banner. You, there's all sorts you can do, isn't there, really? So, um, OK, background scan start and then I can position oh I've just done a background scan haven't I sorry just done the same thing twice not to worry hopefully it should be in the right place that's because I'm talking and I'm distracting myself so I didn't need to do the background scan because I'd already done it so I need to cut so I'm going to say select and cut and start Okay, so that's the two bits of like the frosting. Right, have I missed any questions? Don't think I have, so. Just make sure my cards are stuck to my mat. I don't know if you're frozen now because I can't see the machine cutting. I'm going to flip cameras for one minute and then just go back. It looks as though finished cutting. Okay, let's come back to my desk, unload the mat. So hopefully you're still seeing. Um, I 
I don't know whether one of my cameras is frozen. You should be able to see my desk. Hi Carol from Arizona, welcome. All good Mandy's saying. Okay, fab. It just looked like the camera that was on the scan and cut had frozen. Um, but I'm just checking it and it is plugged in. So hopefully we should be okay. So that's those two. Let's just see, are these the same size? Yeah, these are both the same size. So I think you must just offset them. Because I think on the canvas workspace picture you can see both colours. So we've got two pale pink and we've got two dark pink. So we're getting there with the elements. So I don't know what bit's next. So let's go back to the scan and cut machine. Alison's saying it's amazing how quiet your machine is compared to my CM900. I still love mine. Not frozen here. Okay, not frozen on my... Okay, all right, all right. Fab, thanks. It just looked like as, as if it was frozen for me. Um, right, so we're back, or we should be back, on the scan and cut machine screen now. So I'm going to say home. Okay, go back to retrieve data, USB. Go back to this folder. And the next one I want is Matt F, and that's the banner. So I need yellow. I think they've used so I have got a piece of yellow but it's got bits cut out of it so I'm going to put this on here and let's just see if it's going to be big enough for me to use so we'll go back to the scan and cut load the mat into the machine Barbara's saying all okay on mine. Okay, fab. That's that's good. It just, I don't know. It, maybe it's just me panicking. So I'm going to say okay. Do a background scan, and I do need to do a background scan for this because I say this piece of yellow. I'm not sure whether it's going to be big enough. The DX are so so quiet. You scarcely know their cutting Donna's saying, yeah, it, de the, the DX machines definitely are quieter than the, than the CM machines. But, you know, if you've got a CM machine and it still works and you're happy with, you know, how it cuts and you're able to set your own blade depth and pressure, then, you know, there's no reason to change. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. So these bits are in separate elements. So hopefully I might just be able to get this cut from this scrap. I may actually have to rotate one of the elements. So I'm going to go to edit, object, edit, rotate and rotate this 90 degrees because I think I can just about squeeze it on there. And then these other two pieces, I can cut. So I think I can get the three elements from this one piece of card. So I'm going to say, OK, 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 another OK, select and cut and start. Hi Maria in Singapore, 12.30am here, oh blimey, and you're still up? Right, so, come back to my desk, unload. So yeah, so as you can see here, this has got bits cut out of it obviously from a previous project and I've kept it and I was able to get these two elements. So yeah, don't throw your scraps away. So that's that, that's that. 
that's that. I'm just going to move the mat out of the way. I'm just going to hit the home button. I know you can't see this. I think the only bits that are left are the flowers. Yeah, it's the flowers. So I'm just going to have a quick look at my monitor and see what colour the flowers need to be. So pink, white, yellow and a red or an orange. So we need four colours. So let's bring in the piece of card from before. So we've got piece of white. piece of pink, so we'll use the pale pink, um, the yellow flower only looks as though it's small so I'm going to chop this section off here and hope I can get the flower from that. So we've got white, pink, yellow, and then it's the center, which was like a, a reddy orange. So let's see what we've got in this scrap. We've got some orange, could use orange. We've we got a dark orange. Oh, here we go, hang on. Piece of orange. So we've got four colors, so hopefully these will be for the flowers, a bit of scrap there that's hanging out of my folder. So let's go back to the machine, load this mat. So Alison's saying this scanning is incredible, no other machine does. I. I, no, I don't think there's any other machine that has a built-in scanner. It definitely is genius. If I didn't throw my scraps away, I'd be buried. <laughs> I, I know what you mean, Lynn. I literally had like a big culling of scraps oh, a year or two ago. Literally had to do the same. But I keep, I try to keep my scraps down to a minimum. But I do know what you mean. But it is handy to have them. Did anyone order the June paper pumpkin? I received mine yesterday. It's gorgeous. Um, no. What? Which one? What is it, Donna? What? What's the? What's in the June paper pumpkin? Hello, Ashley and crew. Nice to catch you live. Hi, Caroline. Hi from Slovenia. Wow. Hi. Is it Anka? I got my DX Disney a month ago, and I'm still learning. Thank you for all your videos. Very helpful. You're welcome. Well, generally, I'm here live most Sundays at UK 5pm time and then my pre-recorded videos go out every Tuesday at 8.30am UK time anchor so there's generally all there's always a weekly recorded video and as much as possible I'm here on a Sunday but I have I am busy at the moment with my daughter and a golf so I've missed a few correct no other cut no other cutting machine scans like the scan and cut Donna's saying right Okay, let's go to the um, and it's not the flowers, it's the it's the candles next. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna skip to the flowers because there's flowers on one of these mats. So I'm just not doing mat F at the moment because that's the candles. I thought it was the flowers. So I'm just gonna come down and I'm gonna find mat G, which is the flowers. So there are the four elements for the flowers. So being as though I've got these pieces of card on this mat, I'll do the flowers, which is mat G. Then I'll go back and we'll do mat F, which are the candle flame bits, if you like. Um, yes, well pronounced. Oh, thank you. I have a big bin bag by the side of my desk. It's regularly filled. Oh, no. Uh, right, I'm going to say, OK. Let's do this background scan and start. So just need to just have a quick look at the flowers again on my other on my computer on my next desk to just make sure which colour order they're in. Okay. 
Okay, so on the on the project, the pink is the biggest. I think I'm going to make. Um, I don't know. We'll do it as it is. So the the biggest flower needs to go on the pink. The next size down goes on the white. I just I'm struggling picking up these little tiny bits. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to use the arrows to select so that tiny little one needs to be from this orange so I'm going to move it down and across with the arrows because I'm struggling at the angle I'm sat at to get them oh is it the expressions in ink I um I think it was Rachel Tessman I was watching a few weeks ago when she opened one of the paper pumpkins and there was a leaflet inside and I think she said it was the expressions in ink. We've not got that, I don't think, here in the UK. We only have um, a, a paper pumpkin every so often. We don't get them like they do in other parts of the world on a, a kind of monthly subscription. But, oh, it's nice. I'll have to look out for it on YouTube and, and see. I love the expressions in ink designer series paper and the stamp set. Um, in fact, I think the stamp set's still sat on my desk and the paper's beautiful. Right, so I've got that one on there. I've got the white one on there. I just need to pick up the other flower and that needs to go on the yellow. So I'm going to bring that down and across. And so I've, I should have now the four flowers on the four bits of card. So I'm going to say, OK, 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 select, cut and start. And hopefully my cards are stuck down on my mat and we should get all these pieces cut. And then I need to have a look at the candles because I need to go back a mat and cut the candles and see what what elements I need for those. Expressions in colour is the actual kit name. Okay, wow. Right, so there are those four bits. So just let's unload this mat and I'll bring you back to my desk and I'm just going to jump to my other desk and have a look what colour I need for the candles. Okay so I need yellow and orange for the flames and blue for the body sections. So I've already got yellow and I've got orange so I could leave those two pieces on my mat. So if I unload this one might be able to use the scraps that I've already got on my mat. So that's one of the flowers. But I'll show you all the pieces in more detail once I've cut everything. So if I get that, I'm going to leave these two on because I need yellow for the next part, but I don't know if this is going to be big enough. I need orange and I need some blue which I'm not so sure if I, I might, might be able to do that. So if I put that piece of blue back on there, so we really are using all the scraps tonight, but I don't think this yellow is going to be big enough to get three flames, but we'll see. I might have to put another piece on in a few minutes. So let's go back to the machine, load this mat, we need to go back now to mat F. Oh, I wish you all would have gotten it. Oh, so do I. Right, I'm going to hit the home button, making sure you're still all looking at the screen. OK to delete, retrieve data, USB, file, mat F. OK, I'm going to do a background scan so I can see how much space or 
I need for, to cut these next elements. And I don't think there's many more elements. So I think, you know, we could be nearly getting ready for assembling. So I need, I'm going to have to move this in a little bit. So I need, I'm really struggling selecting the bits on my mat. So I'm just going to keep using the arrows. So I want one of them and I'm going to bring it down onto the orange and just bring it across and then I wonder if I zoom in if it'll make it any different just okay there you, I was able to get that one bring that one down there you go just needed to zoom in why didn't I think of that sooner right so I've got the three smaller flames which are orange then I need the bigger flames need to be from the yellow, but I've got a flower on here, which I can see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate this one and in the hope then that I can get the third one on because I can see that I've already got my flower here that I've just cut out. So if I select that, say OK, OK, object edit, rotate and just turn it 90 degrees. And then see if I can move that up a little, move that up a little and see if I can get these. Ooh, it's going to be tight, but I'll do it. I could rotate it. Let's rotate it. So let's go object edit um, and I'll turn this one 90 that way. And then those two kind of nest to each other there. And then I just need, these are like the bottom of the candle. So hopefully you can all see what I'm doing because I can't, I'm not looking at my, my computer at the moment. So, um, okay, I think we're okay so far. So I'm going to say, okay. OK, OK, select, cut and start and then just give all these bits of card another good burnish down and hope that everything cuts OK. going to delete that off and say home and okay to delete and just see what other elements I know you can't see this at the moment but I'm just going to scroll down and see so the only elements that are left now are all the individual letters that make up the words happy birthday and they literally are separate elements so I don't think I'll bother cutting those because I want to have a look at a couple of options about how we're going to make this into a card so I think what we'll do we'll We'll gather all the elements that we've got now, assemble this, and then we'll see um, what options we've got to make it into a card rather than me sit cutting happy and birthday from individual bits of card. Got all the candle pieces. I'll bring these all in in a minute. I'm just I just want to get them all off the mat because they're tiny and I know I'm probably going to end up losing something. So I'm 
I'm going to just push my scan and cut machine out of the way and bring in all these elements. So what we're saying, Katie's saying, hi from Washington State, joined a bit late, but happy I caught you live. Thank you for another scan and cut video. Always find your videos so easy to follow and learn. Oh, thank you, Katie. That's lovely of you to say. Um, right, let's just, I'm going to make a bit of room on my desk and then we can have a look. At what we've got and then see if we're going to make this into a card. So, I'm going to bring in some glue. So let's have a look at all the elements. I'm just going to position all the elements so you can see what we've got. So the flower's layered up. So, where's my bone folder? Uh, don't forget to hit the like button button under the live stream and subscribe if you, oh thank you Mandy right so I'm literally just gonna with my bone folder just give these flowers a little bit of a curl before I kind of layer them up just to give it a little bit of dimension so we've got three layers of flower have we that one I think goes in the middle didn't we have another one? Hang on. Oh, the dot for the middle, right? This tiny little orange dot. So let's let's start layering and see what happens. So as I say, I'm just using a bit of um, Tombow wet glue. It always has a bit of like a, a dried up end on it, which I, I just pull off with a, a piece of scrap. So this I'm just going to stick in the middle of here. And just hold it in place for a minute. Got a late start. Hello all, Miss V saying you're welcome. It should be recorded so you can always go back and watch it if you want from the beginning, Miss V. Whoops, only just realised it's a Sunday live. I made this card a few weeks ago. Oh, Kareen, was did you did you like it? It looks fun. It looks nice and bright. That's why I thought I'd try it. So this little yellow bit goes in the middle of this tiny um Sorry, this orange bit goes in the middle of the yellow. So I'm just going to use my little takey pick tool and then I'll put another dab of glue And pop that in there so that's the flower I'm just gonna have to hold that down for a few seconds until it grabs so Alice is saying Ashley are you still using your zig um, your mat seems so sticky right so I do still have the zig Alice but I on this particular mat I've used the pin flare stencil glue which I did mention oh, a while ago and I think a lot of you already have it or use it. So this mat has been restuck with the pin flare stencil glue. Okay, so that's the little flower. So let's have a look at what we've got. So these dark pink and light pink I think just literally glue onto each other like so let me just have another quick look at my screen yeah they just kind of um I won't you uh, yeah I'll use wet glue they just nest so that you see a little bit of the other color underneath and I suppose you know it's up to you how much you want to show and obviously the beauty of using a wet glue is that you've got a few minutes to so can you see that you can just see the darker pink 
coming out of the bottom. You've got a few kind of minutes of wiggle room. Spell it, please. I'll show you, Alice. Just hang on. Just give me one minute. Oh, somebody's done it. Mandy G's done it. But I'll show it you. I'll show you the bottle. So I'm literally just gluing at the moment. So can you see this, Alice? That's what it looks like, but um, Mandy's put the name on it, but that's what it looks like in the UK. And all as I do, I keep it in this plastic bag. It's got a very fine nozzle. And I literally just kind of do like an S in each six inch, inch quadrant of my mat. And then I keep an old makeup sponge, you know, one of these makeup triangles. And I wet this, I run it under a tap and then I squeeze it out. And then that's what I spread the glue around with. So that's what I've been using just recently. And then I just keep it all in this little Ziploc bag. And I only use it sparingly. Don't cover your whole, if you, I, I think we've, we've spoke about this before. I, let me bring my mat in. So you can see my mat here is divided up into four six inch quadrants. Don't fill each quadrant with the with the adhesive. I literally kind of do an S kind of shape like that in each one. And then I get the wet sponge and I spread it out. And that's all I do. And then leave it to, to dry. And then just put your plastic cover back on it. Uh, I use that. It's very good. I use it with a damp sponge very sparingly. Yep. I love that glue Rachel's saying, Alice is saying, right, thank you. Okay, right, let's keep going with these. Um, you're a gem, thank you, you're welcome. Um, little bit of glue on the bottom of each of these yellow ones. And then I'm just gonna position the orange bit. So these are like the little flames on the candles. These are the bottoms of the candles. This was the banner. And then those, those bits peek out the end, I think, like that. So let's see what we've got. So this blue bit goes on the bottom. So I think we might need to stick that on first. I'm gonna try and zoom you in a little bit more. Just in the hope that you might get a better, see better what I'm doing. Okay, is that better for everybody now? And then this, I think, just sits on there. So let's use a bit of the wet glue again while we've got it out. Alison is saying, I use it too. I wash and clean my mat up first. Yeah, it, it's, it seems very good. And to be fair, I mean, I've got nothing against the Zig. As you all know, I've been using the Zig for years and years and years and years um but i know a lot of people were struggling to find the zig um i tend to get mine off ebay but i know it's not always easy to find so i thought i would try the pin flare because you know people were saying that they could they could get that easier so Right, so this one is going on here. So Linda's saying, I can see great what you were doing. Very good. Later game, we'll catch up after the live. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. 
um, it, as I say, it should be recorded. So this is going to sit on here. I'm kind of looking across. You can't see, but on my desk that's to my left is where my Mac is. And I'm kind of looking across to try and see how it's all assembled. So these go on here. So I'm going to stick these flat, but I think I'll pop the flames up. So I'm hoping I'm doing this right. I get my zig from AliExpress. Lynn's saying, okay. Could be doing this wrong for all I know, but anyway, this is how it's getting put together. So then these go like this and I think I'll pop these up so I'm going to turn these over and I'm going to put some 3D foam just need to find some 3D foam pads so what's going on I need to stay in late again we'll catch up um, Anita it's a birthday card that's in canvas workspace and I've literally just shown how to download it onto a USB stick and um, I've cut all the elements and now I'm assembling. I use my mats three or four times, managed to stick the cardstock to them so much I had to tear it away from the mat. Um, well, if you're gonna re-stick your mats with anything at all, use it very, very sparingly. Rachel's saying, this will make you laugh after I have made a few of the birthday cards. I shall be starting Christmas. Oh no, don't say the C word. Right, so that's going to go on there. So Ellen's saying, as far as I understand, Cricut have brought out smart material which goes through their machines without a mat. Okay, yeah, the smart material though, Ellen, from what I understand, um, is in 12 by 12, I think. So, you've got to, yes, you can cut it without a mat, um, but you can't chop it down. So, for instance, if, you, if you've got a piece of 12 by 12 smart material and you cut something from it from the top left, you can appeal that away, but you've got to leave, I think from what I've seen, you've got to leave the smart material as a 12 by 12. You can't use scraps, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, we obviously have the vinyl roll feeder, which enables us to cut without a mat. Right, let me, I'm getting sidetracked. So this goes here, above the blue, by the look of it. Right, I'm gonna turn these over. I'm gonna pop these up on 3D foam. So let me find my little foam dots. I've not seen much of the smart material, but from what I can gather, you've got to use it in its full size. And that, obviously, with us, that's the beauty of having the scanner because we could, um, you know, scan the full piece in and work out where we've already cut from. I don't know how you do that with a Cricut. Um, if you watch a few videos, Ellen, on YouTube, I've not watched many, but from from what I can work out, as I say, you've got to use the, 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 the smart material in its entirety so you know like we have bits of scrap like this I don't you couldn't put that through without a mat once you start cutting into your smart material and you've got scraps like this you've then got to put it on a mat and cut your smart material on a mat does that make sense right so where does this flower go this flower goes up here somewhere 
then this banner goes across here um, and these bits stick to the end like this so what I'm going to do I've got a bit of scrap here that I can use um, which is like the end of my dimensionals so if I just stick a little bit of scrap The bottom of the card is slightly out of view. Sorry. That's because I zoomed in, isn't it? And then I moved. Right, so these I'm going to... So this I've just put a little bit of 3D foam on either end of this banner. And then that I'm going to just attach to there, just so it looks as though it's kind of bent. You don't have to do this. You could stick it all flat. But we'll see. Let's stick that on there, like so. And then obviously you could bend this a bit. I've just put a crease in it now. But then this is meant to go across the card. And then you're meant to cut all the letters saying happy birthday and stick them on individually. But like we were saying before, this could be used for any age. So if it was used for a child, you could cut, say, you know, if it was like a fourth or a fifth birthday, you could cut a number and you could stick a number on the front and pop it up on 3D foam. We'll go with this for now. Um, so that's kind of meant to go like that. So let me just, I'm just going to use up the end bits of my dimensionals for now. And we'll just keep going because I want to have a look and see if we can make this into a card. The bottom of the card, nice, looking very cute. Those colours look lovely together. If you like, it's not wrong. Okay, right, so that goes across there. I don't know, I think, I don't know if I've done this the right way around now, but so that's going to go across there and as I say they cut, so I hope everyone can see this now, they they cut individual letters, there's a mat with happy birthday which is individual letters and then this, <coughs> they put, <coughs> excuse me, they put up in the corner like so. So you could stamp happy birthday on this bit before you stick it on. Um, I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals in here. And I'm going to double stack them because obviously this is all on dimensionals and it will just help this these flowers. Uh, my fingers stick into the... So I've got like double layer there and I'm going to pop that like so. Let me just put the glue there for now. So this basically now, let me zoom in. Okay, so can you see that? So this is basically, apart from the words, what the project is. So let's measure it. So it's just over six inches. It's about six and an eighth so I'm guessing let's see how wide it is so if you had a six by six envelope which would be bigger than this I think six by six envelope is about six and a quarter by six and a quarter this would fit I think in a six by six envelope and then what you could do you could maybe get a gift card and put like a glue dot on the back of a gift card and stick a gift card on the back and then write but I'm thinking what if we, let's just turn this over and see how wide this element is. I need my ruler again. This is just, you know, on the fly, so to speak, this. Now, I'm just trying this. Four inches by four inches. So, let's bring my trimmer in. 
I'm going to cut this piece of card if I've got enough. This is what I cut the base layer from. Let's do it four by four. Might have to zoom you out again a bit now. And then if I score it at half an inch, let's see if this will work. No idea whether this is going to work or not. So scored at half an inch. And then let's see, could we stick that to there? So I'm going to use some dry glue because I think it will just um, work. A, oh, I'm out of shot again. Hang on. Let me zoom you back out. So can you see I cut a piece that's four by four. I scored at half an inch. And I'm just going to use my dry glue only because it will hold it better. And I'm just going to sit this centrally on the bottom and stick it down. So I've made, can you see, like a little flap. And then that would let your card um, stand. So that would be a way to make it into a standing card. Caroline, don't worry, no problem. So what do you think about that? That, and it would still fit, I reckon, in a six by six envelope, which I don't know if I've got one handy. Let's have a look and see if it would, because a six by six envelope should be bigger than six by six. Right, these are six by six envelopes. Let's see if it's big enough. Don't know if it is or not. Could could be totally wrong here. Might need bigger envelope, I don't know, but we'll see. Oh, just just a fraction too small. Will it go in that way? No, you're gonna need a bigger than a six by six envelope. So you're gonna need like Maybe a seven by seven or an eight by eight. Um, just trying to see if I've got anything bigger. I know I have got some bigger envelopes, but they're not in this box. So, So what's Rachel? So Alison saying, clever girl, could you group it all in Canvas Workspace and make... Yeah, that's what I said at the beginning. That's what I'm going to do next. That's, I think, what I was talking to Barbara about earlier, Rachel. Um, so cute, loving the colours. This is a cute card. So as I say, in Canvas as it is, it's, it's just that and it's flat. You could, as I say, just write on the back and if you were giving a gift card... Put a glue dot on the back of a gift card and stick it on. Alternatively, um, this piece of white was cut from stamping up A4 cardstock and this is the scrap that was left behind. So cut a piece that's four by four, score it at half an inch and make yourself... Um, it just needs burnishing a bit more to make it stand. Make yourself a, a little back so it will stand. I'll take a picture of that later and I'll put it on the thumbnail. But I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll jump, if you want me to, if you've got time, we'll jump back over to canvas. Um, could you just chop off the blue bit? Yeah, you could. You could trim a little bit off the bottom before you put the blue bit on. It literally is only a fraction. Um, you know, or make an envelope, get some scrap scrapbook paper and make an envelope. Right, let me just get rid of this box and just tidy the bits up on my desk. 
and then do you want to do you want to stay with me and we'll jump back over to canvas workspace and we'll see how, how about making it, it smaller I'm just going to have a drink of my water. But I think it's a, another cute project. And, you know, considering all these projects are free in Canvas Workspace, and, you know, if you want to cut the letters, you can cut all the letters. Or, as I say, before you stick this yellow piece on, <coughs> if you've got any... Uh, stamps you know that say happy birthday or thinking of you or hello anything like that you could stamp a greeting on it you don't if you don't want to stick and cut all the individual bits together um Alison's saying yes if you have time okay so uh, that's fine let's go back over to canvas you're just gonna have to bear with me a minute now while I bring yes have to go Ashley Yes, have a go, Ashley, make it smaller. Okay, great demo, Ashley, have to go. Sorry to make it, it's fine, don't worry, Sean. Take care. Um, Anka saying, sure, let's do it. Okay, right, bear with me while I move all my bits and pieces over to my other desk. Right. Let's see. Just bear with me a minute now. I've got to get myself all organised again. Right, okay, you're still with me. So I think what we need to do is the bits that we need, we don't need to worry about the flowers because they will fit. We're, on, we're only trying to make this card marginally smaller to fit on a 12 by 12 mat. So the flowers we don't need to worry about. The letters will probably still fit, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So the elements that we need, we need the base. We need So we need mat A, B, C, D, E and F, I reckon, that all need to be resized. So Donna's saying, Jennifer Maguire in some of her YouTube video tells how she adapts larger envelopes to fit odd size cards. I think her last couple of videos show how to make the adjustments. Yeah, and Donna, um, I posted a video. I did a live on making um, envelopes and then I posted a video the week after showing how to make them in the traditional style and how to work out how to make them any size. So there's two videos on my channel that have been done in the last few months about how to do envelopes. Uh, Linda is saying, must go, great demo, Father's Day party, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Linda, have, have fun, have a nice time. I'm staying, I'll have to rewatch because I've been distracted trying to multitask and missed a lot, Donna's saying. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's see how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Canvas Workspace. I'm gonna come to a new project. I'm going to come to the SVG icon. And then where it says choose file, I'm gonna to go to that folder that's on my desktop. which is this one, the number 15. And I want part A, so I'm going to choose part A. I don't think you can choose multiples in Canvas now, so I'm gonna choose part A and upload and say okay. Then I'm gonna go back to the SVG icon, back to the folder, choose part B and upload and say okay. So I'm literally just dropping all the elements on my mat at the moment. Back to SVG, choosing the next mat, which is mat C. OK. Um, Donna, they are great envelope videos, Alison's saying. Thea's saying, I think that I made a slightly larger envelope when I made this and I cut the base side. Okay, 
So we've got three elements, so back to the SVG. So which bit do we want now? We want the frosting, which is matte D. Say OK. I don't know if I've just put that on now. Let me just cancel that for a minute. Matte D, OK. So there's the frosting. Um, so I'm literally just bringing all the elements that I think we're going to need to resize. And then we need the candles, which are matte F. The flower, as I say, I don't think it matters. So here's all the elements now. So what I would do, I'm going to layer all the elements on the card. Roughly where they would go. You know, this isn't vital at this stage. I'm just doing it just by eye. So you've got all the little candle pieces. Um, literally just putting all these bits, you know, roughly where they would go on the finished card. Just layering them all up. They don't have to be perfect. You could literally dump them all right across the middle, but I'm just going to do it like this for now. So these are all our bits. So now I'm going to select everything, right click and make it a group. Right, let's see what you're saying because I can see things flashing up. Ashley, oh yes, I remember those lives. I'm always here each time you're live, but usually just lurk. <laughs> I'll definitely make the card. I'm staying, loving it, Ashley, Alice is saying. The post is in two parts, Ashley. I managed to post part message. Oh, I see. Okay, I think I made it slightly large and low. Um, so I best I'd welded them together to make an opening card. Okay, this is what I'm going to do in a minute. So we've got them literally, we've got all the elements now as a group, okay. And if we look at the size, it's six, it's virtually six and a quarter high by just under five and three quarters wide. So if we made the base element into a card, it wouldn't fit on a 12 by 12 mat. So with this lot all grouped together now, I'm just going to shrink it down so that the height is just under six inches. So let's go 5.75 or thereabouts. Could you not just select all and centre both ways? Yeah, you can dump them all. That's what that's what I mean, Lynn. You, you don't have to line them up like this. You can literally just dump them all on top of each other. So long as you group them all, they will resize together. I'm just doing it just to show you how, you know, I've just made the card. So this now is 5.7 high by 5.31 wide. So I'm going to bring it off to the side and I'm going to right click and ungroup it. And now I just want the base. So if I now right click and make a duplicate of the base and then go to edit and flip vertically, if I then line this up so the tips of the candles overlap, select both and then let's align them so they're centred. Then if I weld them, that now fits on the 12 by 12 mat. And because we resized all these together, all these elements are going to fit properly. And where we've overlapped the tips of the candles here, when you put these on, you're probably not going to see that you've lost a little bit of definition. Your eye will be, you know, looking at the flame colour, if you know what I mean. So that is a way to make it into a card. And then again, I would separate all these bits and put all the like-minded bits 
together so that you can then cut them all out in the various colours of cardstock. So if we separate them all out like this, let's move, move this up and then you've got them all on one mat. You might have to rotate them to get them. Let's rotate that one. But then all these elements now fit on one mat as a resized object. Does that make sense? I use canvas offline, so don't need to group. No, if you, um, if you use the computer version, you don't need to group them to resize them. That's correct. Um, in the online version, you have to group them to resize them. I think I mentioned that last week when I was doing the other project. But yeah, I forgot to mention that tonight, Lynn, so thank you. Um, I very rarely use this version of Canvas as I prefer the options that aren't on the version. I tend to always go to the online version, but Thea's saying yes, that's what I did. Rachel's saying thank you very much, Ashley, thumbs up, done. Will those points where the tips of candles support card um they probably would the other way would you, you could do it would be to weld it on the side here um but yeah they probably would alison or just do like i've just shown you with the other one just cut a square a four by four square score it at half an inch on one side and just you know make it stand up that way well, that's if um, when Barbara was asking right at the beginning, if um, you wanted to make this into a foldable card, then that would be how I would do it. I would group all the elements together first, size it down because the size that this base element is, is too big for a 12 by 12 mat. If you've got a 12 by 24 mat, then you don't need to resize it because it's the length that's the problem. So if you've got a 24 inch mat, you don't even need to resize it. You could just make a duplicate of this um, at the size it is, weld it and then cut it on a 12 by 24 mat. So Alison's saying this is so helpful. Thank you so much. Karen's saying brilliant, nice card. Lots of options. Yeah, definitely lots of, lots of options. So has anybody got any last minute questions or suggestions I think what I'll do I'm going to save this now so I'm going to give it a name up here and I'm going to call it birthday card resized and save it and then if I ever want to make it again as a complete card it's now in my projects in canvas workspace Okay, so um, I think that's about it. I've been on over an hour and a half. I'll take a picture of the finished card I've made and I'll post it for the thumbnail of the live in a, in a little while. Um, Barbara's saying, we'll give this a go, Ashley. Should stand with weight being at bottom. Yeah, I think it would. Or like I say, you know, just do what I've just shown how to do by using a piece of four by four card on the back. You know, it still opens up. You can still write a greeting inside. Rachel's saying thank you for your time. All the best to Hannah. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, we'll see how she goes on tomorrow and say she's not 100%, but she's trying her best. Um, I, I, is it? I, I never know how to pronounce your name and I know I always probably say it wrong. Is it Lai? Li Thank you, arrive late, but still learn a lot. Well, it'll be recorded so you can, once this is finished, the stream takes a little while to render up to YouTube, but then you should be able to go back later and watch it. Alison's saying, my sister's birthday, 8th of July. Guess what card she's getting? <laughs> Brilliant. 
Lovely tutorial. Thank you so much, Aura Star. Are oh, you welcome, Barbara? Thank you. Uh, Mandy's saying thanks, Ashley. Lovely project. Thea's saying thank you, Ashley. Great tutorial as usual. Lynn saying thanks again for your time, Ashley. Take care. Stay safe until next time. Yes, same to you, Lynn, as well. Right, if anybody's got any quick last minute questions or anything they want to ask, just ask them now before I go. Denise is saying thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. Um, other than that, I am going to say good night. Um, go and get myself a drink and a bite to eat and have an early night, I think, and get up tomorrow and chill out and then go and make my way over to meet Hannah and get my caddying duties in order for tomorrow. Heather's saying another fab live. Many thanks, Ashley. Have a great week, everyone. Good luck to Hannah. Oh, thank you. Alice is saying thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. Right, I can't see any last minute questions, so I am going to end the stream. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Thanks for being here, as always. Night, night, Alice, and say, say good night to Jim for me. Um, and take care yourself, Alison. Um, thank you, Ashley. Stay safe. Corrine is saying, thanks, Ashley. Good luck to Hannah. Hope she gets her stomach problems diagnosed soon. Yeah, so do I, Donna. Um, okay, can't see anything else, so I am going to go now. So take care, everybody, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll see you all next week. Oh, hang on, I've just seen a comment. Ellen, have Ashley, have you ever done a session on foiling with the machine? Also, I'm finding it hard to buy an easy press. Right, Ellen, um, if you mean the brother foiling where you use the glue pen, yes, I have. Um, I think I've done two lives. If you go to the live stream playlist, there should be two sessions. I'm sure I've done at least two sessions on foiling. Um, and as for the Easy Press 2, I got mine. Where did I get mine? Um, oh, I got, I got, you can get them in Hobbycraft. Um, but I got mine where I got the vinyl. Just give me one minute and let me grab the box and I'll tell you. So, Ellen, I got my Easy Press 2 when I bought my starter kit of heat transfer vinyl and I bought it all online and it's www. G for George, M for Mother, Crafts with an S on the end, C R A F T S dot co dot UK. That's where I got mine from. Uh, Anita saying thank you. Uh, six by seven. Um, yeah, I think I is it. I think it is it the seven by seven that I got that one, Ellen, and I got it with the heat transfer vinyl from GM Crafts. Chris is saying cutting position adjustment. Uh, Chris from Hall or Chris Halifax, what exactly do you mean? Rosemary is saying thank you for a very great tutorial. Ellen is saying it's the six by seven, which seems to be out of stock everywhere. All oh, right, okay, that's the one I got. I think, and I got it from GM Crafts. So have a have a look at that one, www.gmcrafts.co.uk. Hi, Ashley. Chris is saying, Charlotte's saying, thank you, Ashley. I apologise for my disjointed comments. Very slow connection. Charlotte, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, I just need Chris Halifax to tell me what you mean about cutting position adjustment. Uh, Ellen saying thank you I'll try that Alison saying in setting Ashley all right okay cutting position adjustment having trouble it only puts 
across either side. Um, yeah, is it, is it for is it for alignment? I think it does, doesn't it? Not put like a vertical line or something. Vicky's saying, thanks, Ashley. I've been lurking with the sound off helping a friend make her vaccine appointment. Oh, Vicky, take, it's no problem. I hope you're okay. So you can adjust so you can... Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, so for clicking on the objects like I was having trouble, um, that's calibration, screen calibration. Now, let me tell you, I tried doing the screen calibration on my SDX2200 and it's a nightmare. Um, it took absolutely ages. It would just would not let me do it, so I gave up in the end. I did report it to makers and they were going to speak to brother about it to see if... Um, because I think somebody said that Mel Heaton... Um, I think somebody... somebody that follows me I think had said they couldn't do it and they'd message Mel Heaton and she said the same thing she couldn't do it either so I spoke to makers and I said look I'm trying to do my screen calibration and it won't let me do it um, and I believe Mel Heaton has had a problem with her machine so makers were going to speak to brother about it and see if it's maybe a bug that can be fixed in an update um, but basically what I do, a lot of the time when, I, when I'm struggling selecting things, it's because of the angle I'm sat at with my camera when I'm filming. But like you've just seen me do, if you use the zoom in button and then select it, it seems to work better. The other option is to use the directional arrows like you also saw me do. So uh, is, is that what you mean? Kathy Wilcox saying calibration. Um, go to settings to alignment. Yes. Oh, just zoom in then. Yeah, I would just do like I did tonight, Alison. Um, if you don't want to use the directional arrows and and you know move move the objects around, click on the zoom icon, and that I think helps you select it better. But for screen calibration, no, I've um, not done it. I've tried it, but it was a pain. It just it just wouldn't do it. So if Chris Halifax, if that's what you mean, then no, I've not been able to calibrate my screen. But if that's not what you mean, Chris, then if you let me know. Alison, yeah, there's always ways around something, isn't there? Um... So Chris Halifax is saying no off cuts when cutting decoupage. Um, well, I've sh Chris, I've shown how to fussy cut shapes from pattern paper, which is basically the same. I have definitely shown how to do that. Um, I can't remember whether I've done it in a live. I probably have, but there'll certainly be a pre-recorded video showing how you can fussy cut shapes from pattern paper which effectively is kind of what decoupage is so Alison's saying I've liked and good luck with Hannah and her health night night yeah thanks Alison right I am going to go now so on one side um I'm really sorry Chris Halifax I really am not understanding what you mean if you go to my applelover53.co.uk website and use the contact page if you send me an email with a full explanation of what you actually mean then I'll see if it's something I can help you with but I'm not from reading the comments I'm not actually understanding um exactly what you mean um, Chris Halifax just had a thought if you mean when you're trying to cut a shape out it's only cutting on one side of the shape and not on the other 
then that could be that the what you're cutting from isn't stuck to your mat properly or you might need to do a um, a matte calibration which is a different calibration to a screen calibration and basically with that I think you just put a piece of paper or a piece of card on your mat you go into the settings and go and find the calibration section not the screen calibration and I think from memory it just puts like a vertical cut line and you have to try and move little crosshairs over it and if you mean you're struggling to position the crosshairs see if you've got the magnifying option that you can zoom in and move them um, they're the only two kind of calibrations I know of usually when you're cutting something out if it's not cutting completely all the way round if it's not the actual matte calibration it's more likely that your actual mat might not be sticky enough and the media that you're using is not stuck to your mat properly or there might be a bit of dirt on the mat that's making the you know piece of card sit up from the mat um, it can be a few different problems so Donna's saying I've not been able to recalibrate my screen either have used the word round mentioned yeah the screen calibration on my SDX 2200 um, definitely seems to be a problem but like I've shown tonight you can always use the zoom and move your, your objects around maybe it's something that you know maybe it's just a bug and it and hopefully it'll get fixed in a machine update I don't know right I am going now I've been on nearly an hour and 50 minutes so take care everybody, stay safe and hopefully I'll see you all next.